Good evening. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. Free from indwelling sin. In other words, free from disobedience. Let us read from Romans 8 chapter, starting with the first verse. This is Apostle Paul speaking in the God's Constitution. There is no, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. What Paul is saying for those who walk and who are filled with the Spirit, there's no condemnation in you. You're obedient to His Word. Remember, uh, once I said before, uh, when you mention sin, you mention disobedience. What was the sin in the Garden of Eden? Disobedience. That's what it was. Disobedience to what? To what the king stated, what God said. And that's very important because once you realize that disobedience and sin are the same thing, you'll learn to embrace and read and study God's word and live by it. Now listen to what he goes on to say. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life is Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin. In other words, what Paul was saying here was that the spirit of God, Christ Jesus, by embracing that, he didn't have to no longer disobey obey the word of God. He didn't have that thing to keep him from obeying, but the Spirit of God, he walked according to God's word. See, once you embrace, and I, I go on and say so many times, you must embrace the kingdom concept, not a religious concept. You must embrace the kingdom concept. Due to the fact that once you do, Things will come to light. You will come to understand it. Let me give you a good example. Kingdom citizens have no problem when they hear about Christmas. They have no problem with that. Kingdom citizens are knowledgeable. They know about things. Kingdom citizens are not dogmatic. They're strong in God's word. They don't have to debate. They know that they always resort to the word. And that's the same as an ambassador. They are ambassadors. A true kingdom citizen, he's an ambassador. He only speaks the word, not his opinion. Because opinions are like everything else. Feet, ears, nose, everyone has one. That's a human being. But when you embrace the concept of the kingdom, you realize that Jesus was a political figure, figure, not a religious figure. That's why when he was born, wise men came from the east. He was king. That's why when Harab sent the wise men out, he said, sent them out to find him. When you see him, let me know so I can come and worship him. Because he, he was a king. That's why Herod wanted to kill all babies from two years on out and down. Because he was a king. King Jesus. Now, when Jesus started from his father's assignment, God gave him this. Matthew 4 and 17, I was talking to one of my mentees the other day. We had, uh, we had uh, breakfast. And um, Jesus made the statement. If you read in Matthew, let me go to Matthew's here so I can, I always like to bring up the scriptures so you can follow me. Matthew's 4. 17 and when he was released from the wilderness here's what happened Jesus stayed focused on his purpose see we all supposed to be speaking 
the same thing. Jesus went on the 17th verse and for the time Jesus from that time on after he left being tempted in the wilderness from that time on Jesus began to preach and to say repent turn around turn around for the kingdom of heaven is at hand in other words what you lost is here I come to restore it. What is it? The kingdom of heaven. It's the spirit of God living in you. That's what calls you. That's why Jesus mentioned in the sixth chapter of, of Matthew. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he says all things shall be added unto you. The operative word right there is first. See, first, the kingdom. And if you do that, and you stay in line with God's principle, finance, food, clothing, shelter, all these things will be added to you. As I said so many times, you won't have to sweat the small stuff. But it's about obedience, obeying God's word. And I put that to that point, to the point that the Constitution, this is the law. In this country, we have laws and bylaws. We have the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, all of that. And it tells you about the laws that if you break some of these laws, you if you fall, you, you, you become oh, you, you and some of these things you lose your citizenship if you're incarcerated, if you do break any type of law, or felony, or kill someone or anything, you lose your citizenship. My that you you lose your in, in, in a lot of states you lose uh, the right to drive because uh, driver's license is a privilege. It's not something that that's owed to you. It's a privilege. But in the same token, in the same frame, if you disobey God's word and blatantly just go outside of it, you're a citizen, but not in good standing. You see, I want you to understand this one thing. Those of us that are here now are to live a life so we can affect others to come into the kingdom. And if you don't do that, what you're going to find is that you're going to be held responsible for your behavior and your conduct and how you affect other individuals, how you cause them not to come, how you cause them to turn your back on. See, that's what people who don't have the Spirit of God, who are rebellious, and we have a lot of them, a lot of them in this world, you, you, you listen and you watch on television, you listen to the radio and watch on the net where thousands, millions of people are dying because of a religious belief. I want you to understand something. This is, this is maybe news to you, but God loves all of us. Even though we don't obey him, he loves us all. We are his citizens here on earth. The children, God, uh, Pilate made the statement. He says, is, is, uh, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus made the reply, you say, I mean, you say, you well said, I'm king of the Jews. But the creator, God's creator, is the source of our whole being, heaven and earth. He loves us. But he does not love the disobedience, what we call sin. He doesn't love that. And we will have to pay those of us that, that, that claim we know them and live a life of shame, of debauchery. You're going to have to pay for that. You're going to answer for that. Keep in mind, we all have to be on the same page. He was so much in the, his father's business. That after he left, he 
kept teaching about the kingdom, even to the fact that he told his disciples in the 10th chapter of Matthew what to teach, what to preach. He gave them power to heal and all of these things regarding the kingdom of God. Until next time. Thank you.